Hello, my name is Douglas Neat. We're going to talk about tone color. The tone color or timbre of a sound is determined by the relative strengths, presence, or absence of the frequencies and harmonics a sound is composed of. So on the guitar, if we pluck the string and emphasize the higher frequencies, we get a bright sound. If we pluck the string so that we emphasize the mid-range and lower frequencies, we get a darker sound. So the manner in which we pluck a string determines which frequencies and harmonics are amplified and which are diminished. The great Spanish guitarist Andres Segovia once described the guitar as a miniature orchestra. Segovia maintained that one of the great strengths of the guitar was its wide range of tone color. Probably the most common way to alter the tone color is to place the right hand at different points along the string. Major changes of tone color are produced by relocating the right hand toward the bridge, toward the sound hole, over the sound hole, or even over the fretboard. For instance, if we use the arm to move the hand close to the bridge and we pluck there, what that does, it emphasizes the high frequencies and produces a very bright metallic tone color. The musical terms for that are sul ponticello, which means at the bridge, or metallico, metallic. On the other hand, if we move the arm so that the hand is over the sound hole and we play, or even over the fretboard, what that does, it emphasizes the mid-range and low frequencies, which produces that very dark, sweet, mellow tone color. The musical terms for that are sul tasto, which means at the fingerboard, or dolce, sweet. For guitarists, the sweet sound is usually produced by playing over the sound hole, although in special cases when we want an extra dark tone color, we, we will play over the fretboard. And then finally, if we move the arm so that the hand falls at the bottom of the sound hole, in other words, the edge of the sound hole closest to the bridge, what that does, the sound is a compromise between bright and dark. It's a balanced, middle-of-the-road tone that comprises a wide range of high, middle, and low frequencies. That is our normal default tone color. The musical terms for that are modo ordinario or sonido natural. As I mentioned before, beginners are often taught that the guitar has three tone colors. They're taught that because it's concise and it's simple, but it's simplistic. When we move our arm and hand close to the bridge to produce a bright tone color, or move the arm and hand over the sound hole to produce a dark tone color, or move to the bottom of the sound hole for the default tone color, that's fine, but it's, it's the coarsest way to change the tone color. And the reason I say that, it's kind of like an artist painting a picture using just red, blue, and yellow. I mean, you can do that, but most painters and guitarists don't want to be limited to just three colors. We want a varied palette of tone colors, an infinite number of tone colors that we can work with. Now, granted, we can move the uh, arm and the hand uh, to an infinite number of points along the string length to produce an infinite number of tone colors. But trying to move the arm and the hand while you're playing, you know, that can be problematical in many situations. For instance, number one, it may be difficult to do in a fast passage. Number two, it may be difficult or distracting to move the right arm in a difficult passage for the left hand. Number three, it may be difficult if a color change is needed where there is no pause in the music to give one time to move the arm. And number four, moving the arm promotes loss of contact with the strings, leading to mistakes. But I have good news. 
you can produce an infinite number of tone colors without even moving the arm on the guitar. Seven parameters are primarily responsible for the tone color of a plucked note. Many are so closely linked that some players and teachers don't distinguish between them. And most can be done with rest stroke or free stroke, further expanding your tonal palette. I should mention that the quality of your fingernails, the length, the shape, the smoothness, the thickness, will all affect your results in using these parameters. And if you don't have any fingernails, well, some of the parameters will have no effect on your tone quality at all. So you want to have good fingernails. Let's take a look at the seven parameters. I can change the contact point of the fingernail on the string depending on how much bend I put in my right wrist. This kind of movement here. So if I put a little bit of bend to the right, to my right, that presents the fingernail straight on to the string, touching on the left side and the right side of the nail. So that sounds like this. If I straighten my wrist, that presents the finger, the fingernail on the left side of the nail. And that sounds like this. So again, a little bit of bend in the wrist, straight on. Straighten my wrist, left side of the nail. Again, straighten the wrist, or I'm sorry, bend the wrist to the right, straight on to the nail, like that. Now, if I bend a whole lot to the right, that presents the fingernail on its right side, and that sounds like that. Straight on, right side. Now, your mileage will vary because of how you shape your fingernail. Uh, it's, you're going to have slightly different results. But for the most part, when you pluck straight on to the nail, it's going to be a little brighter. And then the left side and the right sides of the nails will be darker sounds. Now, we're not talking about just three tone colors of hitting the nail straight on, left side, or right side because we can adjust that angle of the wrist to present the fingernail to the string in basically an infinite number of contact points. So the tone color can range from the straight on to the left possibilities there, all within the wrist, determining where on the fingernail you contact the string. Plucking a string from underneath, like this, produces a bright tone color. Pushing down on the string from above produces this color. And you can produce any color in between those extremes by varying that trajectory of whether you're plucking from underneath or on top. The degree of firmness in the tip joint of the finger 
also affects the color of the sound, in particular the attack. Putting a lot of uh, firming up that tip joint, a lot of tension into the tip joint produces a harsher, edgier, more percussive attack like this. Allowing the tip joint to relax and to give as it goes across the string produces this tone quality. Edgy. softer attack, and lots of points in between from the relaxed tip joint, gradually adding tension, edgy, and then relaxing the tension for the softer attack. The amount of flexion of the tip joint, how much you bend that tip joint, or even let it hyperextend like that, also dramatically affects the tone color. If we flex it to an extreme degree, and this is tied in with playing from underneath the string and on top of the string and the degree of firmness in the tip joint, it's all tied together, but the amount of flexion if you're going to flex the finger more, obviously you're going to be pulling from underneath the string. Very bright sound. If you flex it less, in fact hyperextend it, it's going to darken the sound dramatically. Because you're not pulling, you're no longer pulling from underneath the string. You're more on the side of the string, coming from the side of the string or even on top. So very relaxed. No flexion at all to extreme flexion. And everything in between. And back. The amount of weight from the fingertip onto the string also affects the tone quality. Whether I use very light pressure or push hard down onto the string like that using the weight from the hand and the arm. So very little pressure sounds good, but heavy pressure sounds better. Light. heavy. The angle of release also affects the tone color. The finger can release the string and travel straight across the string like this, which produces a bright color. Or it can release to the left, which darkens the color. And I'm going to exaggerate it so you can hear it and see it. Straight again, releasing left, straight again, and releasing to the right. And again, anything in between there. I was exaggerating the amount, I mean, you can do that, that much angle of attack. But that's very exaggerated. Usually it's going to be a little more subtle than that. Where the string is plucked along its string length takes us back to whether we want to pluck the string at the bottom of the sound hole for our, our default tone quality, or close to the bridge for bright, over the sound hole for dark, or even over the fretboard. Now, using this technique of moving the hand along the string length, you want to make sure that you have freedom of movement of the arm on the edge of the guitar. 
for that reason, you don't want to practice without a shirt sleeve. Bare skin sticks to the guitar. You can't be stuck there. You don't want to be stuck in one position and have to change the wrist position or rotation or anything like that. If you use a straight wrist position like I have here and you change tone color, you want to maintain that same presentation all the way along the string length. And likewise, if you use the knuckles parallel with the strings position as your default position. And again, as you move towards the bridge or towards the fretboard or even over the fretboard, that angle, the amount of bend in the wrist and the angle of the knuckles being parallel with the strings does not change as you move the hand along the string length. And again, in order to do that, the arm has to be free to slide on the guitar. Do not play with bare skin. Now, if you're wearing short sleeve shirts, you do this. You can use an old sock on your arm. You cut off the end of it. I leave the elastic part for the upper arm to help hold the sock up so it doesn't slip. And that way, you can say you can still wear your short sleeve shirt in the summer and stay cool, but yet you have that sock or that sleeve on there that you can still move freely. Now you could also put a cloth under your arm. It's not as convenient because if you every time you take your arm off the guitar to write on your music or something else, the cloth might fall off. So the sock is very handy, a very handy technique to use. So again, you want a long sleeve shirt or a sock on your arm so you can freely slide on the guitar smoothly. Never lift the arm off the guitar to move from location to location, because when you do that, you lose all contact with the instrument. The fingers have no idea where the strings are. You'll make lots of mistakes. Arm always stays on the guitar. So, I can produce a lot of different tone colors with these seven parameters just at one spot on a string. I can play straight on, I can left side, I can play straight on and hook the string from underneath, very bright. I can add more downward pressure to that so it's not quite that bright. Left side, slice off to the left, to the right, more downward pressure reflection in the finger, just a ton of different colors. So now you can produce an infinite number of tone colors at just one point along the length of the string. Amazing. Coming up in parts two and three, I'm going to explain additional special tools to produce even more tone colors. I'm going to explain how to make left hand fingering choices to effectively color motifs, sections, and even entire pieces. I'll also explain how to choose tone colors. And then I'm going to demonstrate Fernando Soar's techniques for imitating the trumpet and the French horn, and I'll also explain how to orchestrate your guitar pieces. All coming up.